forward this year. All right, so here we are at our first ACE meeting in forever. And so um, I wanna thank you also for your patience as we try to sort of parse out how this, how this process works and what we want reviews to, to look like. Um, and sort of just in general, the reviews that have been coming back to me, like the last cycle of reviews was so much um, less work for me to, to try to see, does this really get this score and is this worded well and all that stuff, they were great. And so um, I thank you for that. And I think that um, one of the challenges that we should figure out tonight, um, Oh, here's somebody. Oh, good, it's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Can you hear us, Michelle? Yes, I can. Good, okay, hi, welcome. Hi. Um, one of the challenges, we're just getting started, we were just chatting earlier, uh, okay. is, to, is to really come up with um, some standard language that we want to include, and my, Hope has been to kind of dance. I've been dancing around that, and so I've been sending you back reviews um, after I've gone through them, and they are changed usually in a pretty minor way. And um, when you look at those reviews, then hopefully that helps you with your next one. In this case, it was months before our previous review, so um, but still they came in and they were just really looking great, and so. Um, one of the th one of the challenges that I've been trying to remove from the from the reviews, and I don't know that I'm really supposed to be doing this, but I'm trying to make us look like we're a team. <laughs> and so I wanted to like sound like it's all from the same person. And I've been kind of re I've been removing the eyes. I checked this or I found, and if it needs a if it needs a person, I say we. Right. <laughs> um, just so it sounds like there's a, you know, a whole team of people that have looked at their course and they can feel more maybe confident in their review that they get back. Right. And then Michelle and I were, were chatting over email earlier this week because um, one, of the, one of the nice things about our section, D, is that it really is yes or no. Like you either meet this or you don't meet it. And if you don't meet it, you have to, you have to make a change. And so um, we, we need to be kind, but we also need to tell them that they have to do these things. So if we get, if you get a course and there's no captioned video in the videos are not captioned, the recommendation is not, you know, we, recommend you caption your videos it's you must caption the videos Ca videos must be captioned um, and one of the ways that I've been trying to kind of lessen the blow for people which is I think half of what we're trying to do is get them to know what they need to do but the other half is getting them to actually change it mm -hmm. and so <laughs> we want to be kind and so what I've been trying to do is um, make sure we tell them when they have things that are accessible. And so if somebody has done a fantastic job with all of their PDFs are in great shape and they're fully accessible, we should mention that to them. We should tell them instead of just not including it in our report because there wasn't an issue. And I think that the more we can sort of tell people where they're doing well, um, it will lessen the blow for like, oh, you're really going to have to go and get all these videos captioned. So um, the other thing about the language um, that I've been trying to, to be consistent with is that if somebody, if somebody gets satisfactory, so they get a three, um, then I usually try to just, I just say what they need to do to get to the higher level. So if, they, if we're in section D1 and they had links in their syllabus, then it's an easy thing to move to exemplary, just add the links where the software is needed. Um, and, and to kind of tell them, is it easy to get there? Like it's really pretty easy in most cases to go from a one in section D1 to a six 
that's a, you know, that could be a 10 minute job. Whereas captioning all your video is going to be a bigger proposition to undertake. And so, you know, like, what do they have to do to get to the next level? And I think the other thing that I've been doing, and I'm going to send this out to you, um, that, let me see, I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to share my screen here, my messy screen. So don't be, don't be like disgusted by how, <laughs> how horrible my desktop is here. Let's see. Um, I've got a lot of documents open. Uh, wait, can you guys see this? Yeah. So I made myself a little um, Word document because I was tired as anything to be going and looking on that at one page, uh, three pages, to figure out which page is the thing that I need to go to reference when somebody doesn't have good link text, right? This, this page in here. And you have no idea whether it's on page one or page two or page three of that site. Do you know what I'm talking about? Right. So I'll send you this. I, it doesn't have all of the links, but it's like your cheat sheet um, of where all that stuff is that now shouldn't need looking around. And so I kind of organized it. Boy, that does not need to be that small. Um, I organized it by the stuff at the top is um, things on web pages and the stuff in the middle here is things that are um, related to um, documents and there, it's not all of them but you'll notice there's a lot of things in that on that site that we just don't report on that are like you know I can't even think of an example but um, it's just not it's not in our list so i'll send you guys this list that i made as just my cheat sheet because every time we do a mention like somebody doesn't have meaningful link text we want to make our links in our document be also meaningful links and so we would highlight meaningful link text and we turn it into a a link in microsoft word and you can just copy and paste this in there um, that's frankly what I've been spending most of my time doing on these reviews is making sure every time something comes up it's linked. Now most courses, if they have bad link text, they have it throughout their whole course and so I don't do it a thousand times, I just do it once. But if they have it again, like if it's in their discussions and we've pulled out discussions and highlighted those as a separate item, um, do it again or, or not. But we definitely need to be including these links so that people know how to solve their own problems. That's good. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I, I hope that they are using them and know that they're links, right? That they don't just open the Word document and, sit and not think about clicking it, or worse yet, they print out the Word document and they don't know what they're missing. Right. And so I think that those are, um, in terms of, you know, dealing with the review itself, for me, what I'm that's what I'm finding. The other thing I wanted to um, show you is that I had a meeting with Lene about this process because we're going to the Zoho system to try to um, consolidate the workflow into one place. And as I was doing it, I was realizing that um, the records that are created in Zoho um, go with the course. And so we're going to have our ACE reports, but then the poker players are going to have their reports also. And so I've probably told you three or four different times what to name your document and where to put it. <laughs> but for right now, what, what the, the word on the street is now that we want to do... Um, we want to use this format here. So we start with the campus name, you know, and so if it's like Monterey Peninsula College, those are coming through as MPC. And so we do MPC underscore whatever the CID number is, the instructor's name, and then we're going to follow all of them with ACE. And just so the lead reviewer knows, because they're taking our section D stuff and they're folding it into their bigger report. 
So that's one thing. And then the other good news is that I don't know if any of you were having trouble with this crazy word document, but I have been having quite some time with it. And so I um, had to go ahead to eliminate all of the nested tables in tables, which is the format that the lead course reviewers are using. We, I don't want to use it. We don't need to use it. They're going to take and copy our body text and paste it into their table. So they don't really need us to have that. So I've, I've just, I've left the tables where you can give people scores um, because it makes it easy and those work fine. But then um, this other section in here is just text. And so um, see how great it works. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh yeah, there. So it's just text. And so you can just type in here and it'll just be like a normal document. Oh, okay. And if you'd like to, if you're like me and you want to just start a new section on a new page, you can just insert a page break. You don't have to worry about splitting a table over pages. And so that That'd should be nice. Yeah, that should be a little easier. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to move it on to you in a second, but let's, um, I wanted to show you something because um, I've had a few questions about um, checking some of the content in WAVE. Um, so the WAVE checker, um, I, have, I have my course that I just migrated from Etudes into, into WAVE up, and I ran the WAVE plugin through Chrome. Um, can use whatever you want. But one of the things that we absolutely need to comment on in, in every course, whether it's good or, or not good, is their heading structure used in their course syllabus. This is the page to check. The other pages would be great. Like we want, you, you want to check them and you want to make sure they have header structure, but you can, you can glean a, an awful lot of your, what your narrative is for, for section D3 just by um, looking at the course syllabus. Because frankly, most people's syllabuses have all of the problems that you're going to encounter again in the modules. And so um, we're, we're looking to make sure that they have headers on everything. So not just bold text, not just uppercase letters. We see an awful lot of that coming through. Um, you'll see meaningful link text is, you know, if they're going to link to their PDF, like they want to have meaningful link text here. Um, if they have lists, they need to be truly either numbered or bulleted lists. Um, and, and I think, and the other thing that we find, um, I just wanted to point out, I, was it you, it might have been you, Michelle, was it you that asked about table headings? Yes. And so um, often people use tables, right, to just format data. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't actually make table headings on that. Right. And so the way you can tell, I have a, t the, when you go into anybody's course syllabus in Canvas, every syllabus has, has this kind of schedule of events mm -hmm. that, that gets automatically generated at the bottom of their syllabus. Mm -hmm. And this one is accessible, and you can see that it has this column table heading at the top, row table headings, and so it, it lists out when they're present, and if it just shows you this little box, then it doesn't have, uh, it, it does not have its table headings, and so that's how you can tell. Um, we will never comment on this auto-generated stuff that people can't change. We just leave this out of our report. But th I just wanted to show you that's how you can see it. And often, it looks like it's fixed, but often, or maybe it's just fixed in my course somehow, there's an error in this table. There was like a blank cell, or I, I can't remember what it was, but it gave a wave red flag. Again, they can't fix it, so anything that is in Canvas that they don't have any control over, we just leave out of our reports. Mm -hmm. okay. So those are kind of the big things that I've been seeing. Really, we have like, you know, five or six, you know, we have sort of the same basic 
list of problems coming through on every course. What are you seeing, Cynthia? Okay, I have a question on what you just said. Um, if we find a problem in Canvas, do we tell you? Do we report it? I asked at the uh, TBLC meeting um, on uh, Friday, and because one of the head honchos for Canvas was doing a presentation, and um, he said that we should be reporting it as a support ticket, and um, uh, that, of course, the more they got, the better it was. So should we, uh, for instance, when we found out that thumbnails do not allow you to add in um, uh, alt tags. Right, for the video. Uh -huh. So um, I think it would be great. Um, I, I don't know how to do that. Um, do you know how to do that? Hmm. Yes, it's an email, um, and he gave, uh, I, I've got to, uh, um, the email address of the person that we're supposed to send it to. Okay. Um, find it. So I can, if you send me that, I will send it in the email that has these other documents in it okay. also, because if you, if you have time, that would be awesome to do it. It would be good. I'm actually, if you put them in the reports, I'm pulling them out of the reports and making a list, and then I usually send them to Lene, but I could certainly send them to whoever this Canvas person is too. And so we do have this list of sort of known things, um, like the links, right? This, the link text has, doesn't have enough contrast, and we can't change that, and, and so we just don't tell people this, that they, you know, because they can't do anything about it. But we're aware of it, and there's some problems with NetTutor also that, you know, so, so the OEI is kind of compiling those things. And I think that's Jamie's role yeah. in dealing with that kind of stuff. He was on the conference call and he didn't say anything. Oh. He, didn't pop up, he did not pop up and say, oh, Cynthia, just send it to me. Right. <laughs> um, so. <Yeah. laughs> now, he wasn't feeling well, so... Maybe he was, you know, out of it and not paying attention, but. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Well, if you send me that link, I will send it out. You guys don't have to, you don't have to report it. That is a, a bit of a work to do that. You can just send it to me or you can leave them in the, um, it, keep them separate, like make a separate list so that it's easy to pull them out. Um, I am reading every word of the, of those reviews, I think that there's a time that I'm not supposed to be doing that is what I hear. And so, um, you know, at some point we're going to get to the place where it's all just a smooth running machine and I won't be needed. So, oh. <laughs> we'll see. You're I mean, always needed. You're I'll know, be needed right? for other things. I, I shouldn't say I won't be needed. I'll be needed to do other things. And so while I have the screen share up, let me just show you guys Zoho, um, which is what they're using um, to organize, organize us. And there are lots of problems, and we're all just kind of trying to work, work this out. But um, so this is Zoho, and right now I have no tasks on my list of things to do. Hooray! Um, yeah. <laughs> nothing to do. Um, there's this old weird task that I don't actually know what, what it's here for, but I'm going to open up this task just so you can kind of see the inner workings. And so it's kind of like a ticketing system and you'll get an email when a task is assigned to you. So rather than uh, me sending out you know, I'll send out an email or I might even send it through Zoho that says, hey, can you do two reviews this cycle? And if you say yes, then I'll just assign them right through the system. And so I can go in in this ACE review page here and um, I can assign it out to, um, to somebody and it will be in process. <laughs> Uh, I have several options. Then when you turn it in, you will turn in your report into the same system, and then you'll flag this as pending approval, 
that will send me an email, then I will check, it the, check the review and put the final one in and say it's completed, and then it goes off to the lead reviewers. And so there's like, there's a lot of moving parts, and we're, we're just one piece, and we're gonna kind of really just stick with these ACE, ACE tabs. We don't have to go into all of the other stuff. Um, the task owners, you can see in here um, that you're all in here. Um, as are all of the poker reviewers. And so once this is live, I can just assign Rhiannon a course this way, and that will generate you an email. And what's kind of awesome about this, if it really works, <laughs> mm -hmm. is that um, all of the um, course information is held in inside this particular course record. And so it'll have the login um, to the course, it will have the faculty member's name. It'll have those supplemental documents. Were those helpful to get yes. things from the faculty? Yes. Okay, good. I'm going to keep requesting. I, didn't, I had no idea that they even existed until I logged in here, and I was like, you guys have been holding out on me this whole time? <laughs> These, because it tells you, like, I have PowerPoint files, or I have this. Like, it gives you the keys, I think. Right. Good. I'll keep getting those. And so you can see here that ultimately, um, so I went in and, and put in people's um, rubric scores in the D section here so that then all of this can be seen by OEI. And so there's not, it should eliminate a bunch of emails, I hope. That'd be nice. I don't know. I can't tell you when this is going to be active. Um, I doubt that it's going to be fully live on the next cycle, um, which when I talked to Lene, she said that the next cycle was tentatively set to start next week. So March 7th is the, the next review cycle. The previous cycle has, was delayed. So I'm not sure if we're going to start on the 7th and just forward forward or if we're starting on the 14th. I will keep you posted. And so this is kind of cool. You can go in and see, um, like you could, you can look and see other where where things are once we're really using this. Um, I can go in and like, what's a review we did last time? Um, Cynthia, what was one of yours? Um, econ uh, two uh, the la, la, la and it was. Um, was that Monterey? Um, I had one from Monterey Peninsula. I think so. I think, yes. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. And yeah, here it is. So here um, is is the record. So I can go in and look by course. Um, ultimately, I'm going to try to figure out how I can get closed ACE tasks to come up so that I don't have to ask who was that, what was that course. Like it had just come up as something that I was already completed. But you can see that in here, if I look at the ACE review, um, it was assigned to Cynthia, even though it wasn't, I was doing this, we were just playing like playing school. Um, so we assigned it here, um, it came into me, I set it pending, I came back, I marked it completed when it was completed. Um, it tells me when it, it, um, it says it's due a week after whatever date I assign it. So for all of these courses that are kind of trickling in over the cycle um, it, it's helpful because then I know not to be bugging you like I just sent you a review and where is it like I know to wait a week um, but here's the file so here's the actual um, report that we did before I knew the better naming scheme so this is what was submitted to the final reviewers they'll be able to pick it up from here now ultimately this will also be used to um, track payments uh, so that you guys get paid so that it compl it's not there I don't know how far it is to get there um, but my request was when something got set to status completed that that was then sent to whoever it is in that's processing the invoices so that they know that you did what you said so that when the invoice comes in they know the work was done that is oh. not the case right now. And somehow we've just gotten moved like 10 steps backwards. And so from, from, for right now, I need you to send me your invoices for oh. 
um, doing these reviews. I, I don't know why, but so you send them to me. I will then send them to Lene. Lene will then send them to the business office, and then the business office will do whatever they do. So it's um, <laughs> wow. I don't know why it's gotten all of a sudden so confusing, but so I am your, I am now your new contact for um, mailing invoices. And the request that I got today was that um, we'll try to do a meeting. Bef you know, kind of either right after the review cycle or right before the next one, just to do this kind of thing. Um, you should bill for that on the same invoice as the review cycle. So you can mm -hmm. say, here's the, here's the, I did two course reviews um, at this rate, and then here's the hourly rate for meetings. Um, and those, I think, were in, in your contracts. I, haven't, I don't have your contracts, but that information yeah. was in there? Yes. Good. So just send them to me and I will forward them along the telephone tree. <laughs> so that I think is all the output I have. Um, and now I would love to get your thoughts on doing some course design. I'm going to stop do, like doing these reviews and what is working, what's hard. Um, like one thing I one thing I found out, like weirdly helpful is so um, when you go into a course the first thing I've been doing when I go into courses nowadays I shouldn't have I shouldn't have stopped my screen share hold on um, and we don't need Zoho let me go back to my course um, so I'm gonna get rid of all of this so we we are supposed to have um, designer instructor access into into these courses and so the first thing I've been doing is going into the files area because you can look through everybody's you can look through all of the files that have been uploaded so you can see oh there's PDF files here there's doc files here it's all going to be in their list of files and so it's a super quick way without having to go into each little assignment to see like, oh, on that one assignment that I didn't happen to check, there is a need for, you have to download this doc file. So I found files to be incredibly useful for that. And the other place that I thought was super helpful is if you go into the modules, you'll see um, if you see any pages, you're not going to see any in my course, but if you see any pages that have the little, it, it looks like a little cloud with a down arrow, that's mm -hmm. a document. So it's a page that's linked right to a document download. And so you can just scan through all of the modules to see, are there any of these little cloud icons? So that handles number one, D1, super fast. That is not, I like the files. That's a nice, uh, quick way to, to look at that. There's my tip. <laughs> That's great. How about you? What did you find, like, when you were working in Canvas that wor was working great? Me particularly, I, I, um, I look at the, the syllabus. Um, first, I read the their, their application, the document you send with it. Yeah. I look to see what they have in there, because they usually list everything in there, and sometimes it's not actually in the course, but they right. send this. And then I look at the modules. I always look at the modules and the syllabus. And do you yeah. think in yeah. these in these courses, because they're organized differently mm -hmm. than than the Blackboard courses that we saw or any other courses, it, it almost feels to me like our old way of doing it where we said, like, here's what we found in content modules and here's what we found in discussions and here's what we find in quizzes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's really the right way to do it because we may just say we looked at these three modules and we found these subsections yeah you know like i'm not sure we want to break it out because when you think about a faculty member trying to implement it um they're probably going to go through module by module right not thinking about they're they're not they're thinking about these buckets now not necessarily different types 
Yeah, because I felt like it was easier to go through the through the modules and then they have already their series of their discussion, their, you know, files, whatever in that particular module or, you know, chapter, what have you. And where it was the other, where, you know, Blackboard, you kind of had to go into discussion, you kind of had to go into these different places where here you don't have to do that. You can go through one module and kind of be done with that one module and have touched all those aspects of it, discussion, you know, any downloads or what have you. Um, I think it's been a lot easier yeah to get um things reviewed the one thing i've been noticing for me i don't know and i've used uh, two separate computers when i use the wave plugin i have crash issues like it does i keep it cycles and cycles and cycles and it doesn't want to load and then eventually it does but on two separate computers on two separate operating systems i have that issue really yeah what browser are you using it in? it would be in the chrome browser wow and you've tried just dumping it and getting it again yeah so then i would then i would i was just going back and trying to use the actual website which was a hit or miss depending on if you know had logged in or what have you right the other one I've been using, I'm just trying to look for the, for the name of it now because I had some trouble with um, I had some trouble with getting Wave to check something. And oh, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to be able to um, to look at um, alt tags without ha with without necessarily having to go through and run. I wanted the alt tags to be visible, and so. Um, do you know, um, well, Sean Keegan, who's been doing, um, a bunch of accessibility stuff, um, for many years in this system, um, he gave me this tool, um, this web developer tool, and I'm going to put that in the chat room here, um, that is a extension that's a it's like a plugin just like wave is um but it gives you a different toolbar and so it's a firefox extension um let me just show <laughs> um let me show you what it looks like and so um it gives you like i'll just go back to zoho it gives you this little toolbar up here at the top so under underneath my bookmarks it, it it's done this and so I can, um, you know, on any page, I can just go in and I can say display alt. Oh, wow. And it would, sh now this is a stupid page to be showing you this on. Let me just go to something else. Like, um, uh, let's go to the, here. We'll go to the at one page and see if they've done their job right. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so I can just say dis display the alt attributes. And you'll see where they um, where they just come right up. The time that I find this incredibly useful is some there's some weirdnesses with Wave um, and Canvas, and sometimes you can't really like it doesn't check everything because it's in a frame or it's in something else. Um, and so this is what I default to when it doesn't when Wave is not working. And the thing, the one thing that I really like in it is, um, let's see, information. And I can say, um, show element information. And look at what happens when I just roll my mouse over this page. Um, it'll tell me, it'll show here at the bottom um, the, it, the code, right? So it'll tell me... Um, so if you're into code, like it'll show you all of these all of these things and tell it it tells you a bunch of little information. So if you can't get something to work, this showing these tags has been helpful for me. It's called it seems like it's called the web developer add-on. That'll be cool. I've been using the uh, right click and selecting uh, show element or display element or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, that would work too. That's a good idea. Yeah, but no, this is this is better because. Little, then I, yeah. yeah. 
the other thing uh, the other thing we're finding an awful lot is um, I'm seeing a lot in these courses as are you is that a lot of people are not um, for the alt tags they're leaving the file extension at the end so there's a dot JPEG or a dot PNG which really needs to be removed and so again it's easy fix but easy to mistake it's an easy mistake for somebody to do the the other thing that um, has been coming up for me in my trials here about what to do is a lot of people because because our at one course uses those picto charts um, uh -huh. infographics so we're seeing an awful lot of these pages that have infographics on them that are not accessible and you know they're as bad as a chart and so what we what I have been saying for those people is I call it out in D3 and I say it has an inadequate alt tag. We'll discuss this further in section D4. And then in D4, I'm pretty much telling people that they need to go and talk to somebody at their DSPS office and come up with some kind of accommodation plan. I am not trying to teach them how to make this complex chart with a great alt tag. I am not a specialist at that. Their campus resource people would be able to help them um, do that. And so that's when we say, okay, if we find something in D4 that cannot be fixed or is hard to fix, then make a note of it for yourself. Make sure you put it in D4 and say, this is the kind of thing where you need an accommodation plan in place. That's a good idea. Because we can't, like, and I don't have a good resource for them to say, like, here's what you do with your complicated chart that I can't even understand. Like, an alt tag, the alt tags usually say chart of something or right. you know, the distribution principle. Like, it's not enough information to, to, to be useful. Um, but I can't tell them, like, oh, well, I fully understand your chart, and this is what you should say. Like, I don't know what the hell they're teaching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like Cynthia who's like learned like economics from reviewing courses. Oh, that was such a good class. It was just full of accessibility errors, but my gosh, that was a great class. You all should look at it. This guy made Donna makes cool videos. This guy made cool videos. He was talking about a curve as he's walking along a curved path at the beach. Uh, he's talking to you as he's riding his bicycle. And of course, he's not talking to you, but it felt like he was talking to me. And I actually typed, while you were talking to me, I, and I went, oops, oops, no, he wasn't. <laughs> God, that class was good. It's just highly inaccessible but that was the content that was the content though yeah and we were you know and that's what's so hard that is what has been the hardest part for I think all of us is that we we really are not to be con commenting on the content and, and I, I asked today. Lene, you know, and I even asked Lene today I said tell me do you want me to include because we've <laughs> So I've heard, you know, all of these complaints about things and change this and do this and sometimes like, no, I shouldn't say it's not all complaints. I've heard lots of good things too. They like the, they, faculty like this sort of punch list of things to do, but it's overwhelming because it's too much. And so it's like, well, do you want it or do you not want it? Or do you want half of it? And then we give them half and then they're like, well, it would be really helpful if they told us where they found this problem. Like, so, so it's a dance and we'll, you know, decide, we just will figure out what the right one is. But I think that, um, you know, I said, are, are broken links an accessibility problem? Like, is this something that we should include in our report or is the, con the person who's looking at the course, are they looking at it, they experience the same broken link and it's in their report because they happen to notice it and they wrote it too. Like, we don't want to put it in both places. Right. And Lene wasn't sure. And so we're, we should continue to include those things. They're not, I mean, they are accessibility. Like, it's not accessible. You can't get to it. But it's really a content problem, I think. Um, 
you know, at any of those times where you see links that go to external sites, don't some of you are spending a lot of time checking all those external sites. I would not check all of them. I would like kind of give them a quick glance and see like, does it look like it's going to, you could run the wave checker on it. I don't need every, every problem that happened on an external site. All we need to know is like there was problems on your external site. You can't fix these problems. We're going to list it in section D4 because you'll need an accommodation plan or you'll need to find a different website. So don't waste too much time checking, checking all those external sites. That would just be a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Michelle? Did you have any insights of things that you f figured out that made it easier to do these reviews? Um, I added the Chrome Vox as the screen reader, which has helped me immensely. Oh, that's a good tip. What? Um, I, I open Chrome. I open, uh, when I do my courses, I'm in Chrome. And then on the upper right hand corner are the three do lines. Do you want to share your screen? Are you, are you at, do you have Chrome on your machine? I do. I was just going to ask if you're at your computer. <laughs> um, yes. So how do I share my screen? There's a little share screen button at the bottom. With your oh. mouse, yeah. Okay. Screen, I think. Does that work? It does, yeah. yep. Okay. So I'll open Chrome, and this is where I found it. Yeah, I have so much trouble with voiceover. I'll be super excited to try this. Yes. See these little lines right here? Yep. In the upper right-hand corner. Click on that, and then on More Tools, then go over to Extensions. Yep. And then you click on... On, on, on. <laughs> Come on. In the window that appears. <laughs> yes. And right here, the Chrome Vox. Okay, cool. Enable that. And it starts reading everything. And then you, and then I have the course open, like if the course was open on this button. Chrome colon slash slash Can you hear it? Extensions. Yeah. Then what I do is here's the class. And you just click Google. and see the brown line. I'm pointing at it with my finger like you can see my finger. <laughs> the brown line will go around whatever you're doing. And it reads it verbatim. That's awesome. So can you, can you just go to that like Canvas user dashboard? I'd love to see like the one that's, a, yeah, that one. User dashboard. And then, so how, so in order to turn this off, you just have to go back to the extension. You go back, yeah. Enable it. Yeah, so see it opened it. Yep. Alert. Yep. Log into Canvas. Great. Look at that. So it'll even tell you if there's a label on that form. It will get yep. the label for you. That's awesome. Password. Password edit text. Stay signed in. Checkbox checked. Nice. Oh, that is so much easier than my using voiceover. It, it has saved my life. Awesome. And when, when I'm reviewing a course that has, like the last one I just did with all those PowerPoints. Yeah. And, oh, those were horrendous. And it opens in Canvas, so you can use the screen reader, and... It will tell you if it can be read, if the PowerPoints can be read in Canvas, and then the screen reader will tell you it can't read images within, within the course in Canvas. It can't read the images. So then I open it in PowerPoint, and every image did not have an alt tag on it. One of them, one PowerPoint had 43 missing alt tags. 
So this thing has been a lifesaver. And just go over here and then you go back to more tools. And it keeps reading everything you're doing. Right. And then you just turn it off and life is good. That is so great. I'm looking for it right now. Chrome box. There it is. Yep. Add to Chrome, please. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That is Chrome great. Chrome box spoken. Feedback is ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, though. You have to remember once you're done reading something, you've got to turn it off. Wait, now i got to figure out how to turn it off. Sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. There you go. Look, it's done there. <laughs> That's great. That's a good tip. You know, and the other, so that brings up another thing. So even though all of these things are often just displaying right into the browser, and so Canvas is doing a really good job rendering all this stuff, we still need to say if it's a PowerPoint, it needs PowerPoint, and if it's a PDF, it needs reader, um, because people will often want to download those um, right. and have them read to them in the native app. So, right. um, so it's great. Although it's, I was wondering, Michelle. I thought, how is she? Doing? <laughs> oh, it reads fine when it's in the browser. I'm like, really? You're actually going through and checking all the reading within the thing because I would just take them down and then read see if they worked but it's great Chrome Vox that's super yeah because I used to just download it to to like PowerPoint or the PDF but what if somebody doesn't want to go outside the course and if it opens within the course I wanted to know if it would work and I accidentally came upon that, so that has saved my life as far as reading within the course. That's great, Cynthia. I don't know. You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> I, I, I'm so used to other, you know, CCMS with Steve Klein. He's he's uh, he's wonderful, but <clears throat> anyway, uh, I, you know, I hate Chrome because it always crashes my system. And I and I actually was going to uh, say. Uh, Rihanna, uh, that might be your problem. Chrome totally crashes my Mac, um, both at home and here on campus, every time I use it. So, um, I mean, it'll work just, and then all of a sudden it goes into some kind of a script error, and um, then it just crashes. So I looked for Firefox, my buddy Firefox, <laughs> and same thing, there's these little three or four lines for right. a menu you open and there is an add-on called text to voice so um i i did uh install it but i have to restart my um uh, firefox for it to try it but there is so i don't know if it's going to be as cool as chrome's but there is one maybe um if, if I if I restart Firefox, I'll lose this meeting. Yeah, <laughs> right. I've never had Chrome crash yet, so I'm happy about I that. <laughs> yeah, I haven't yeah. had the. I have not had that either. Um, and I wonder. And I'm on a Mac, but I don't know. It stinks though, because now Rhiannon's having to spend all this time wait. Like that's frustrating to be waiting for all of that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, do you, um, I, I thank you for all of your work in getting, getting all this together. It's, it's been really great to, to see these reviews, and I, um, it, it sounds like uh, maybe what I should be doing, instead of just sending you back reviews is that um, I could easily, so I just started making that document that has all the, the links that you'll use all the time. Um, I could also add to that document sort of the common language for the common problems so that you have this template where you can just copy it and paste it in 
Um, that would be nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. I hear you. I hear you. I, I've been resistant. I have to say, I've been resistant to do it because I feel like I'm not the. I am. Don't feel like this is the way to do it. And so I've wanted to kind of see all of them and and kind of come to what the way is. But I think we're probably at the point where we're all feeling comfortable enough now that it would just be helpful to have to have this and not have to rethink it every time. So what I'll do is right. I'll. I'll um, go through and and start compiling that um, document also that has some common ones so that you don't have to rethink every time about whether somebody needs an accommodation plan, the five sentences that go with that um, thing. We don't want them to be, you know, a form where you check the thing and it's just here's the right. generated. They still need to be these custom customized reports, but... Um, but certainly we can have some standard language. So I'll get you those before, I'll get you some of them before the next round, um, the easy ones, and then we can just keep adding to it as we go um, mm -hmm. and putting more of them in. But like, you know, meaningful link text, missing alt tags, captioned videos, needing an accommodation plan, you don't have Acrobat listed. Like, <laughs> these are the things we all have written yeah. 25 times, so. <laughs> exactly so I'll get those and then as we get more sort of standard ones and you know really the goal is is that you know I, I don't know the whole process here but the goal is really that faculty should be able to run their own kind of accessibility checking before they even right. submit these courses like they shouldn't be getting to us and certainly not at the re-review stage with this kind of level of of problems and frankly we've had so, like we are I'm the hard ass like if it weren't for me everybody would be teaching an OEI like frankly I I don't know that I've pa I think we've passed through one or maybe two courses have had three or above in all sections of D and so that is that is not very good and I think no. all the courses that has gone through had nothing in it. It was just text and no pictures on the web page. <laughs> it, was, it was fine. I mean, it was fine. Like, but it was not, I'm, I bet it did not pass section A through C, like for lack of interactivity and interesting right. use of media and all that. So, like it probably, probably failed on their end, but it was awesome for our side. <laughs> We'd like to get to the point where we can get this kind of stuff in the pipeline so that faculty can know how to make their own changes before it even comes. But that's probably a long way off. Um, how many are getting like the one that I just did? Um, not the great one, but the, the one where it was the Barstow one. And Barstow, as I said, I know I've done some Barstow stuff. I don't I can't find where I've done them, but I know I have. And they just are refusing, or at least the ones that I've seen, they're refusing to put the course materials in Canvas. And, and so, I mean, I got so lost on the, the – I saw you clean that up. But I got so freaking lost, I couldn't figure out where in the world I was because I was taken from Canvas to their homegrown, uh, CMS to Moodle to something that wasn't Moodle but looked like Moodle yeah. and I was so lost in that course and I, I know what you're saying that's not that's a content problem but my thing is is how could anybody find anything in that course it, we've seen a lot of those and we're seeing a lot we might be seeing more because all of the a lot of the courses that came to a, all the courses in the last round are re-reviews, which means they were reviewed in their native their old course management system already. Now they often most of them did not ever have an accessibility review before, so all of this D section is going to be new, hard to hear information because they thought their course was ready to go if they made these twenty five changes that were listed in section A through C, and now here we are like lumping on a whole nother pile of crap. Um, so 
It's, uh, it's hard to know, and I think that they were required to move it to Canvas to teach it through OEI, and so it's all being hacked together. And I think that those are things that the other, um, the other reviewers are, are finding and noting. And so whether they get what they do, I'm not sure what the remedy is going to be, because these courses are now going to need to be reviewed again because of the significance of the changes that we're asking for them. I'm just looking in my my constantly available rubric. Um, one of the things is so so here's where I think we can get away with saying some of this stuff. If you look in D3, in order to be um, distinguished, you would need to have course materials are HTML based. So um, it, there's a lot more to that sentence, but, the, but that is the key to me. And when somebody turns in a course that is of just a 10,000 PDFs and all of the PDFs were inaccessible, I said, I think it would be better for you to take these PDFs and instead of working on each and every one of these PDFs to fix the accessibility problems, if you took the content from these PDFs and you put it into Canvas, because that is what it takes to be a distinguished course, technical, technically, and it's learner support so that they don't have to keep downloading documents and finding where they are. So that is where I felt like we had the right to say some of this stuff. And so you, sh you can feel free also to, to say those. But if there's 10,000 different places, that is, it, it doesn't, you'll, you may, if you look at the, um, the rubric, it is in the, what it needs to be distinguished or exemplary category. So it doesn't actually prohibit us from giving them a three if they had, if all of their crap was accessible, they get a three. They do not get to move beyond that. The problem that I'm having is that if we have a course that is got everything perfect except it's missing meaningful link text, that according to our rubric gets a two. One thing causes it to not be all course materials are compliant with these section 508 and WCAG 2.0. And so that is where I'm continuing our discussions with OEI because we shouldn't have to. We should be able to say, you can change this thing and move on and not, we don't, and, and we're going to give you a provisional three because of the chat, because these are so minor. Um, and that, that was one of my biggest issues when early on when I was doing courses with you that you, I would give them like a four and then you would bring it down to a two or a one and, <laughs> and I even had to ask you, but it was one thing right. and, and then I understood it though. Yeah. yeah. So, and we can't, and it's hard. It's a very slippery slope to say like this wow. matters and this doesn't matter, right? And document language in your PDF is not the end of the world, but a missing all text is the end of the world. Like, I, I don't know who draws that line. Um, right. It's really not, it's really not us. So I think really our job is to report what we find and score it based on the rubric. And then the people that are further down the line can decide what they want to do with that information right. and they'll either right. tell us or we, or not. And we'll just keep doing, I think we have to play by this rule book until told differently. The document you keep holding up. That's the rubric. rubric. It's just the, like what it takes the original, like what it takes. Can, to get, do, you have, do you have that electronic? I do. You don't have that. I do have no. I, I have the, I have the other one that you put into the old um, review where we uh, the old Moodle course. Yeah, that's it. Oh, not the feedback one, but the actual rubric. That's the one. It's the same one. Okay. Um, but I do have the rubric. Um, I will. I'll send that out too. Um, okay. Yeah. Here it is. Can I send a file through this system? Mm, no, I don't think I can. Uh, I'll send you the rubric. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, Donna, did you also see where I put the email address for the support? I did. Yeah, I did. Kurt, Kurt Show Walter. Great. Thank you so much. All right. I don't want to keep you guys any longer. Go and enjoy the rest of the evening. Have a glass of wine. And I, exactly. uh, <laughs> I'm going to go put my daughter to bed and then have a glass of wine. Actually, then I'm going to send this email. But um, this has been, I, I hope this has been helpful for you. It's, it's helpful. Yeah. At, like, frankly, if all I, if all we all got out of this is Chrome box, I think that, <laughs> that's awesome. That's like the, because for me, the screen reader, and I know Angela, um, who's not here, but Angela is, was, she's like phenomenal at using, she uses JAWS and she's like, da, 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 so yeah. fluid in it, you know? And I'm like, oh, I wish I was like that. And I keep plowing my way through voiceover and I just feel like every time I do, it takes me too long to get it to try to read the thing I want it to read. And yeah. it like starts reading character by character instead of like the words. And so uh -huh. this will be great. Well, I hope it helps. Yeah, good. Well, thank you. And thank you all for your, your hard work and your patience. And I will let you know um, if we're getting more courses by uh, the 7th, or if not the 7th, it'll be the following week, the 14th. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Right. Thank Bye. Bye. Bye.